Hey, welcome back to the Mind of Fossil. We're going to do uh, Detective Gumshoe's second testimony. Best me for turn about. Here we go. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him. But we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. First chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. The crime was reported at 2.25 by some- by a kind of scary old man, sir. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> no, it's another person. I'm not the scary old man. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Uh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them. And seeds. Mm, seeds. Mm. <laughs> it was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. I guess not even the mighty Godo can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently. So he was late reporting the crime. Well, Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene at around 2.40. <laughs> Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. Why is he <laughs> oh, laughing right oh, now? That's really funny, dude. It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that. All pretty and peaceful. Jesus Christ. You're a professional, Detective Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Save the romantics for your own time, Detective. All we need to know is about the investigation. Not the tips. <laughs> I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? Uh... The victim didn't have any identification on him. He didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. Uh, the victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. <laughs> All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm on to something here. Uh, figured out who he, who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smooth. Wait a sec. Huh? D did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? <laughs> yeah, basically. In that case... How were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh. That. He's so lit down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going on. There was a uh, prescription bag on the victim's table, along with the lottery ticket. Mr. Glenelg visited his doctor before he went to Trey Beyond. 
we got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Mm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? Ask about its health insurance. <laughs> ask about the prescription. I, I just okay. need some recommendations. I'm kind of searching. Yeah, Obamacare got defunded. So. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? I don't even know what that is. It's 2004. <laughs> well... Who the hell is Obama? Actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah. Completely empty. It was completely empty. Victim's prescription, prescription bag. bag. The, the victim got this from, from going to the doctor before... <gasps> Going to trade beyond the bag is empty. Huh. Only entering an empty paper bag is evidence. Desperate are you, trite? Now what happened with the investigation after that, detective? The bag was searched, found the lottery ticket, and the bottle of poison. But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey! Yeah! Yeah! yeah you, you nailed it, pal! Hmm. It happens to me all the time! We had a department party in the, the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes! Objection! Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. So sorry. Oh, trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. It's a pretty bold statement. Gotta back it up with some evidence? Um, well... I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have... no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Ah. Continue with your testimony, witness. That was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. So the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just gonna let him get away with it. It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in his testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with. I can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb, they missed something obvious. <sighs> Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been. Hey, what am I doing? Uh, let's, I need a refresh. Let's look at the evidence. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll ever use the Magatama again, but okay. just remember that uh, Jean Armstrong stole it from us okay. and put it in the kitchen, okay? Uh, magazine clipping, uh, I don't go from December 5th, since I was Johnson and my client was found guilty. Uh, sports paper left by the victim, it shows the empty bomber doodle right there. Uh, which remember that Maggie thought that they were like a record salesman, and that they were making a deal, and empty bomber was the, the, the disc that, uh, the victim was giving, right. uh, to somebody, okay? Uh, uh, job listings where we found this, uh, where, uh, old guy was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where Victor Kudo was. Uh, Trabion Special, it costs $20 and it's completely shit. Mm. Uh, Jean's loan contract, he's in a debt for half a million and the owner of the loan is tender to lender. A uh, scooter was, uh, written by Yo Phony. And it's, uh, completely wrecked up. Uh, Glenn's autopsy report died from potassium cyanide poisoning. It was, uh, between 130 and 2.30. Uh, Trade Beyond Four Plans is where Victim sat right there on top of the table. He was on top of the table doing a fucking dance. Of course, he was not in the seat, of course. Uh, this is where he is dead, on top of the table. 
doing a bit of a dance. Mm -hmm. Uh, the coffee cup, it shows, uh, potassium cyanide. Uh, we know that the victim drunk from it, because there's a coffee stain right there. Uh, it's covered in the victim and that Maggie's fingerprints. Uh, victim's lottery ticket is, uh, for a million bucks. It was found, uh, during a body search of Maggie. Apron was worn by Maggie at the time of the incident. It has a small pocket, but big stains, coffee stain, and then that's a ketchup stain. Uh, and, yeah, within the pocket was the lottery ticket. And, no. Within the pocket was this, the potassium cyanide, actually. Uh, the deadly powdery poison that was back in uh, fingerprints found in the apron pocket. And then we just got this, the victim's prescription packet. Uh, he was going to the doctor before, he went to the doctor before going to Trebion, and the bag is empty. Why would it be empty? He just got it? He just got it. So, so why would it be empty? So, uh, let me go through the testimony first. Okay. Uh, Graham was reported at 225 by this kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification. But we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then this investigation went smooth. And Maggie was searched. Uh, we found a lottery ticket in the, body of, uh, the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing but the crime scene. Except for... the medicine that was inside of that bag. Good job! Detective Gumshoe. I think I should point something out to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. <laughs> Finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so uh, hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trey Beyond. Where, then, did the medicine disappear to? <laughs> you are too cool, pal. Indeed, he is cool. <laughs> Actually, in this robe, I'm quite toasty. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're not talking about that again. I'm hot! No, we already know that, you are, uh, How? I, well, because I just told you. <laughs> You're a smoking old fox, you know? I've never touched a smoke. What? <laughs> well, you seem pretty healthy, then, if you haven't touched a smoke before. Well, yes. I gotta... I am, I am in fairly good health. Yeah. I would think that you would, you know... I've drunk a lot of, like, lead before, you know, due to your lead. State, of, state of mind, but... I used to love huffing paint chips, Ah, actually. there we go. Yeah, there we go. Now it makes all sense. That yeah. was a favorite pastime of mine. That makes sense. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh... I guess that's the most careless thing I've, d I've done so far, huh? <laughs> the victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Order, order! Well, Mr. Godel, what do you have to say to that? Huh. That's all. What? Wait for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Otolaryngological Clinic? Otolaryngological. Otolaryngological. Hold on. Otolaryngology. 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 Oh, Owen, Owen, Owen. Wait, what? Otolaryngology. Oh. Otolaryngological. Otolaryngological. There you go. Got it. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Early an illness, Your Honor. But like a bit of war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. 
took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? There was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? To mention in the autopsy report, you read the fine print. They found traces of the medicine in the victim's left ear. Yeah! Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. What? It seems Mr. L qu uh, correctly applied some of his medicine while he was at Trey Beyond. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he had eaten his medicine. Eh. It seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. Oh. Think! If you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Push it. Push it real good. Only moments ago, Mr. Godo made the following statement. It seems Mr. O correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Beyond. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? But, but, the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. Topical use. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't change the fact that it could have been found at the scene of the crime. That it could not have been found at the scene. That it could not be found at the crime scene. However, Insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medicine medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Kotel is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Yes, the case is over. Mr. Kotel? Uh, my, uh, I got my own witness I like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the, uh, 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 on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo? The pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial. Tri trivial at best. Oh. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yeah! Good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten minute recess. After which, we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Huh. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. <sighs> that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir! No, it's my line! I think I really did die a little bit. <sighs> Looks like we really, oh, we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How can he betray us like that? Huh? He said he helped me, but he totally set me up. <laughs> I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. All no, about lies and betrayal. I've had that my whole life. It really hurt this time. It felt like someone pinched me hard in its stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next one is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to really be, be pretty stubborn. I mean, it's pretty set in his ways, you know. 
Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you gonna be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Ah, court will now reconvene for the trial of Mankey Bird. Mr. Godo, your next witness, please. Prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. The witness, please take the stand. Of course, I remember the voice. I'm an occupation, if you don't mind. I'm Mr. Godo, born and day bred in the land of the rising sun. I know in duty, or what make me, mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. It, my occupation? Is that... Listen, youngin, how, how much time do you know uh, there, uh, there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do! I did back then, back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were imported with Kimotos before this country even existed! Oh, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe he, he, he could have been bored in my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much of a demand for that kind of thing here. Yeah. Trying to take a job working the cash register at Burger Joint, pretending to smile. That Burger Joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yes! I was eating some Caesar or a cup of Jabuccino. Seeds? What do you think these are, huh? Uh, uh I seed. <laughs> ah, nice one, Yana. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh, yes! Yeah, oh, yes, I did! I saw it all! Please. The court. All he is. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. And I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. A young man was reading the sports paper. The civic guy brought up a cappuccino. She put something in it. The man who took one sip of it, and the man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and it collapsed. That's the seven girl. Right there in the fellowship. Remember well. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Yeah, it was about as the rest of them. I mean, she think of words. What's wrong with the old fashioned ones, huh? Newfangled? I was talking about idioms and glasses, wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone! Don't forget the old values! Don't let the good old days slip away! Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The young man was reading the sports paper. So you saw the victim then? You saw Mr. Glenelg. I wanted to know if Gustav Brown retained his championship or not. So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question. There are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you are sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Yeah. I go to that place and drink a Jefferson. I don't go to sit! I don't remember which table I was sitting at. You mean you go there to eye the waitress? So the girl brought him a Javachino, but she put something in it. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I, do, I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. 
I bet his eyes are only really fine when he... He's scoping out a waitress. And I saw what that scummy girl put it in the Javitator as well! That I know what's coming up and something tells me I'm not gonna like it. Fresh Hada. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's copy. I'd like to ask what the witness... I'd like to ask that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Um, I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Yeah, sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very... This is a new line. What the fuck is wrong with me? There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Did she really put that into the coffee? <clears throat> you dummy boy! She took out a small brown sparkling bottle and sprinkled it in! Couldn't she have been adding sugar? SUGAR! In a small brown bottle like that! Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? <laughs> a bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, here it is! That's the one! That's a bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Uh, cocaine. The man took one sip of it and looked like it was in terrible pain and then collapsed. He took just one sip? You youngins, you waste everything! Now Jeremy T has got eight dollars! In the good old days, they would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died! Congratulations, you have earned the title of baddiest man to grace a courtroom. So it was an immediate death. Well, potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slept over without so much as a twitch. I felt the jam machine I just drank turned sour into my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waiter is? I presume she is... That's a civic girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you could identify her by? Any particular features? The disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry. You can see all the way through. <laughs> You know, she's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit. But anyone could wear just such a uniform. Even me. <gasps> Mr. Wright, we spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. No, don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep, keep, keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. Nah. There are other things I recognize about her, too. Seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Who's <laughs> Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. What matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these are the features that you recognize about the defendant? I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Ah, sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair, and apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember serving details, several details about her appearance. What about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Yeah, I said I wouldn't remember that. The witness noticed the straps on the accuser's apron. It was unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right! I can't even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair! It was red! So you see? There's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Yeah. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Waitress is back. That has nothing to do with anything. Uh, some traps. Yeah. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? Uh, what? 
the ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the fascination? For fascination? Objection! People have all kinds of fetishes, Trite. We don't need to embarrass the witness. This is going on, they got upset. I haven't got some sick strap fetish! Mm. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap fetish! How many times do I have to repeat myself? Very well, continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo, and make it strapless! <laughs> you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. He was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I, I guess. Hmm, she makes a good point, though. Hey! Did, did I say something clever? I wonder if the waitress Mr. Kudo saw really was Maggie. That's what we have to figure out, Nick! Okay. Move on. The waitress is back, and we'll ask about the waitress was back. On the next, next episode. episode, if you try to turn your trials and tribulations, really make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that bell so yep. you'll be notified every time we upload, which is every day. I genuinely did not think they would talk about fetishes in this game. I never yeah. seen. I've never seen that conversation before. Oh really? Yeah. Because I've always chosen the waitress is back. You fucking idiot. Oh my god. Anyway, goodbye. Bye.